Good clap. That was, that was good. Okay, thank God. I was I was scared I was gonna. Botch that was like a that solid clap. B plus. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'll take it. We'll get better. I was trying to get that degree. Thanks there. for not using the obviously placed. Oh, I, I right swear there. I <laughs> couldn't see it. Oh, check oh, it out. I, you know what? Right I here? really did like it. Was, it's not like not in you your life. You stacked it on me, man. <laughs> you stacked it. Didn't even give me off center. You, you like this little cat that car cool. from Final Fantasy? Oh, that I got, is like, the, awesome. I got, the, I got like the chocobos and like. Oh my gosh. Like that. They should have made yeah. these ninja star shaped. Yeah. Oh, sure. be cool. <laughs> or just, just hone cool. it to a fine edge on the side. Yeah. <laughs> that, you yeah. Know, I'd love to see that. would be a good kill in a movie where it's like some like layer. It's like some gangster layer, but they so everything they make is a weapon. Yep. Like table legs break yeah. off. So then the knees are like. <laughs> He's sitting there with like a quarter just sharpening the edge. Yeah. 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 Rubbing it. Yeah. The whole, the whole scene that you see him doing it. And then the reveal is that he goes. <laughs> yeah. Like, he goes. <laughs> Commando Sob Schwarzenegger with yeah. uh, yeah. those, those buzz those saws. Yeah, the Sob buzz saw blade. Oh my god. Out of that shed. Somebody <laughs> sent me that freaking scene. I almost oh, pissed my pants. <laughs> that was so good. Commando. Dude, what were you. No, what were you saying? The uh, Oh, Big your voice. No, yeah, your voicemail. <laughs> Dude, you quoted that for a second there. I was like, wait, did he get a, There was this whole thing. I'm like, did he get a recording? He's like, when the rain's falling from the sky and, the, and the, you know, and the, the, uh, the heavens are falling, the, you know. And, I had a cheat because I, I had. Had it almost, you know, half memorized. I'm like, I'm gonna go look at this. I gotta, I gotta be authentic when I'm sitting this busy. <laughs> I saw it. I, pre I mentally prepped for about half an hour. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Just saw it and I, I, I really had to send it over. Down. <laughs> I did try a couple times. I wrote it moderate. down. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So. You mean you're not recording? Yeah. <laughs> this, is, this, is, this, is the, this is the extra stuff that they don't get. I'm yeah. Behind, yeah. behind the go scenes. YouTube, this is good. Okay. Are we ready, yep. gentlemen? All right. What's going on, party people? We are back with another episode of the Pop Culture Field Manual Podcast, sitting right at the intersection of weapons, action, the military, and pop culture. I am one of your hosts, Cameron Fath, and I am here with my other host. Israel Wright, yes. Or Green Beret. It's really good to be back. And we have a very special guest. Yes, we do. For all of you, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you my good friend, Actor, martial artist, fight choreographer, and trainer to the stars, to Peter the stars. Thomas. Peter Thomas. Peter. Hello, hello, Thanks hello, for hello. Thanks for rolling all over. <laughs> check, check. Am I on? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah you're here. Yeah. We got uh, you, Peter. Welcome, man. It's, good. it's really good to see you. It's you an and honor. I have been friends for a while. It's been a while since we've seen each other. Yep. Uh, and so, uh, like, give me, give us like the maybe the five minute version of your life in the entertainment industry. Uh, who are, is you now? Peter you Thomas? You know? Yeah. It's, who is Peter? It's it's been a long road um, since we've moved here, just about twelve years ago, um, and you know it all started off with with just a dream. I, I used to drive up from Orange County and train with uh, uh, guys like Dan Southworth, who's one of the Power Rangers, and he's a good buddy of mine. And I used to have to commute all the way up to train with these these legends at a place called Valley Gymnastics. And um, you were doing this for a long time. Yeah, I was doing that for a number of years. He kind of took me under his wing that I met uh, other amazing people like Mosh Mike Wash, blah, blah, Mike Washlake. Don't <laughs> tell my He's going to hear he's this and he's going to be like, I wanted, fake friend. I wanted to call him his nickname, but that wouldn't be proper. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, we don't, we don't give a shit about no. that on this podcast. <laughs> but, uh, but, but Mike Washlake, Dan Southworth, uh, friends like Arnold Chan and, and all these great people in the stunt world they all just pretty much took me under their wing and um, and it's something that I've been wanting to do since I was a kid the first time I, I watched Phantom Menace in the theater I saw Ray Park do you know his his bit with Darth Maul and I thought yeah. that's there was a moment there it was a pivotal moment for me because I, I was already kind of training um, that style of martial arts we had a little bit of blend of wushu we had a blend of a Vietnamese martial art called Bao Trinh, and my teacher Tony, uh, at the time, he was already working in Hollywood, and he, in fact, he was on the Mortal Kombat TV show and a bunch I of other things. That. So, as kids, as 12, 13 year old kids, we were already training like stunt performers. Oh. Wow! That was around the same time when I had seen, you know, Episode One Star Wars, and uh, and when I first saw Ray do the butterfly twist and um, all the cool <laughs> moves that he yeah. did. I thought yeah. that's exactly what I want to do with my life. So, you know, 
just mm, the rest cool. of it was history. Hell That's cool, yeah, man. So man. and so you and I met uh, at a local gym here in town, and you were the kickboxing coach, and I was one of the coaches in the gym. And so, uh, I is that now? When did you start kind of start getting into like? You've done training, of course. You've been mm -hmm. a trainer, and you are a trainer now. Uh, uh, what about like stunts and fight choreography? When did that kind of start becoming like more and more actually like a a part of your life? Or I don't know. I don't know if you ever like pursued it like ardently. I feel like you're just in it now. You know? Yeah, it's it's again. It's one of those things. It's um, you know again the the lifestyle of a creative person is is a uh, it's a blessing and a curse, and it'll never deviate until the day you <laughs> die. But uh, it, it's it's been a again a, a long road and. Um, it all started with just small little projects, doing stuff for college, you know, um, film projects and, and just little student films. You and I got a little something out there yeah. on YouTube, that rooftop fight yep. scene. Yep, just practice, you know, just the, the, the learning is in the doing. And so mm -hmm. just getting a lot of practice, getting your buddies and, and, uh, and having, you know, concepts that you'd like to see um, manifest. <clears throat> and so we started that way. And, and then that kind of just took its own course. Uh, I, I got very lucky at a young age, uh, just before moving out here. I, I wasn't even in LA yet, but I, uh, I I used to double David Carradine before he passed away. No way, and David Carradine, yeah. Kung Fu David Carradine. Yes, no yes, way. the legend. Uh, wow. You know, he just, he was like a father to me. Um, and it was one of his last projects just before he had his incident. Um, sadly, you know, gone too soon, but uh, that was kind of the, the start and, and that actually was, uh, you know, that position was given to me by a guy named John Crane, who's a stunt coordinator. What's mm. up, John? Good to see you. Uh, <laughs> nice. He's a great guy. John. And John uh, gave me this position and uh, it was a small little film called Night of the Templar. Uh, and it's a small Ooh, little sounds little, mysterious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> small little film. But David was in it and, and Udo Kier was in it as well. So we got to talk I think Udo was in the original uh, Indiana Jones oh. he played the, the German uh, the nemesis of, oh, okay. of Harrison Ford so I got to spend a lot of time with these two interesting men and just learn a, a thing or two about the show business and just kind of how it works and I, I was talking to the crafty people and, and the other um, actresses and actors on set uh, and just kind of getting a vibe for that world that I was about to endeavor in and from then on, it just kind of blossomed, and I got you know a bunch of other little things that I worked on throughout the years. Yep. And um, fast forward, I I met Miss uh, Halle Berry. Um, Whoa, and yeah. I got a I got a call. Sweet. Give me an autograph. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I got a call from some uh, you know mutual friends of hers uh, because I was training a a Chinese um, artist. She's a musician. I remember from she used to come into the gym. Yeah, her yeah. name is Cat, and She's uh, super cool. And Kat was really, really close with this inner, you know, small group of, of performers and dancers and artists and singers and whatnot. And so uh, as the story goes, I, I realized that there's this, this kind of strange sensation within me that already knew what was going to be next, uh, whether you call it manifestation or, <clears throat> you know, um, just uh, divine intervention, but it was it was bound to happen. And I just figured, huh, you know, in my head, I was saying this like, oh wow, how interesting would that be if I started training Halle Berry? And <laughs> a few days later, it happened, and I got a Dude. message saying, hey, Halle wants to meet you. She's seen your stuff, uh, and she's you know she needs to, a new trainer because the other one just wasn't working out or something. Mm. I said, yeah, I'll come over. You know, I'll come over to house. You know, I just. Played it cool, but inside I'm like dying. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. you know, I, I normally don't get starstruck, but it, but being who she is and being a fan of her work, I, I realized, wow, this could be something really interesting, you know, for uh, for just um, you know the sole purpose of of getting a client that is that reputable and and having this this one one moment to just to to shine and to to show that hey, anyone can do this just with a small dream, you know, you have this small little moment you know and you just follow the path of of what your your main heart's intention is and, and it could take you anywhere and it can bring you to really interesting curious places oh, that's wild wow. so, dude that's you have an amazing story i knew it because <laughs> yeah. before we started this yeah <laughs> man i before we started this podcast i was like i want to know your background but i'm not going to ask until we're on air because i'm you seem like a very cool guy and Thanks, i it, wow man that's awesome so could you tell us a little bit more about like 
Halle Berry as far as just because we know Keanu Reeves and like mm. it, especially from a military perspective like his uh, weapons training for the John Wick series like Keanu Reeves is shooting two gun like we've all seen the videos and the dude's just an absolute monster when yeah, it comes to yeah. just that firearms how was Halle Berry's transition or did she have prior firearms did experience you a, did you have a hand in, in John Wick 3 or getting her ready for that or anything like that you know it's it's interesting to think about all this because um Hallie one day asked me, Peter, I have an audition that I need to prepare for. Can you help me, you know, shoot a, a, an action, like a little segment? And I went, you got to audition for stuff still? You know, <laughs> you're Hallie like, like, Barry. Monsters Ball? Yeah, you call Academy people Award and tell winner? them you yeah. want to be in their films. Yeah. And they say, okay. They call you. Yeah, yeah, they call you. You're a Catwoman. You're Storm. Yeah. Right? Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so I said, of course. And so Sunday rolls around, and my friend Marco Zoror, yep. good training buddy of mine. Great our action star, Marco Zoror, shout out. Yeah. Yep. We're going to be working on something very soon with him. Ooh. So Ooh. Stay, tuned. stay tuned. Stay yeah. tuned. Um, but Marco is a great guy, and, and he said, of course, I'll be there. And, and Tony Diaz is another amazing friend of mine, and, and Tony works for National Geographic. So I knew I had the right people there to make this look polished. And um, to conclude here on this little story, um, Hallie was originally using this footage for Avatar, and um, and so we made her fighting style. I designed it to where she looked like a Navi character, where she was going to have these primal movements that would uh, that would just showcase her skill set. And she wanted it to be no green screen, no wires, no special effects, no makeup, just her and me, and just real action. And so I trained her for this, and. Uh, one day on a Sunday, we just knocked it out in a couple hours. Um, we didn't eat anything, and we had this funny <laughs> story. Where we were just like eating salt because yeah. Mar Marco is this massive health fanatic, and he's like, "Man, you just need some salt and the seventy-two trace minerals." So, <laughs> Allie, Allie and I are eating salt, and like you know, like horses salt lakes. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and surprisingly, it worked. It like satiated oh. my hunger. And I'm like, let's just charge through this. Marco. So, awesome. um, we filmed this thing in her backyard, which looks like. It really does look like you're in the Japanese bamboo forest, and there's these like 150 foot bamboo trees all around you, and it looked awesome. I'll have to send you guys that that footage of this fight since you can see it. Absolutely, um, that'd be awesome. And so, uh, yeah. So what happened with that is she met James Cameron, and for whatever reason, it just was kind of pressed on pause, or I think they went another direction. Um, if I can recall, I, I believe there's a specific type of technology that's not out yet, and James, being who he is, he wants to be the first and, and you know that person it's to, always to do it. Yeah. yeah yeah you gotta be the Wait first for the technology to uh, catch up to his vision exactly exactly yeah. um and so with that being said nothing became of it but because of that uh a gentleman named chad seleski the director of john wick uh the stunt double for keanu reeves in, in the matrix um and, and that's how that relationship started <sighs> And he also was the stunt double for Brad and Lee in The Crow just prior to his passing. Wow. Uh, Chad and I, uh, later on I got to train with Chad at his school called 8711 Action Design. And uh, I was there Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6.45 a.m., hard, long. It is the most jarring two hours of your life. Uh, you are in a room full of the best stunt performers in the world. Um, and that's where Keanu trains, Hallie trains. Everybody and anybody, um, Charlize Theron trained there for Atomic Blonde, oh. um, just to give you a little Nuts, little dude. bandwidth of what goes on there. But uh, anyway, uh, Chad saw this this footage of Hallie and I fighting each other, and he goes, "Huh, that's really good. Who filmed this? And who's that guy? And uh, yeah, this is great." So he later on um, connected with Hallie and said, "You know, basically she 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 painted the picture that she wants to be in this movie." Um, because the script was given to her and they were thinking about putting a female assassin if I remember the details correctly and uh, and that was it and, and that's how that happened yeah. so wow. um, yeah I, I got her prepared for it and then with that she then was training with 8711 and got really prepared for this because there's as you can see oh, all yeah. the tactical stuff so she went oh, and yeah. trained with uh, with Taryn tactical and yeah um, and, and all those guys and uh, great people and, and she was just fully immersed in the the world of, a, of an assassin of a tactical um, 
uh, you know, cold-blooded just, killer. Yeah, man, man, she man. was. She was a cold-blooded killer. And she had those dogs. Yeah, yep. the dog, the canine fight the, the sequences. Oh my god, and that was all real. Those dogs actually yeah. jumped up that wall. And oh, absolutely. Yeah, that is unbelievable. like I, I've talked about canine capabilities yes. in like the gameology videos that me and Israel do, mm -hmm. and those dogs are no fucking <laughs> joke. Like they not only go from bomb detection, but we used to be able to use the lasers on our weapons and like reel them in get their attention kind of like a cat with a laser pointer yeah. and like you could get their attention and shoot a laser into a doorway like 100 meters away and that thing would just like a fur torpedo take off and go into oh this so you gosh. can actually control the dogs with your weapon and it's Jeez. like they are they are such an asset to like a working platoon oh, yeah, so i'm sure it was so much fun for her to be able to work with those uh, dogs she fell in love with these dogs Absolutely. she's a big animal lover on top of it so okay. she has dogs of her own but mm -hmm. these were like a whole nother caliber yeah. of, of just these this ain't your this ain't your lap dog <laughs> no. this ain't no pomeranian no, you're walking no, around no, beverly no. hills yeah. And they're but, in the middle of Morocco filming this, you know, yeah. partially in New York, of course, and then mm -hmm. uh, most of it in Morocco, especially her scenes, because uh, she comes across as a very ethnically ambiguous mm -hmm. uh, woman, and and so could be from anywhere. Yeah, and I, I actually worked with a with a, uh, a SEAL team uh, member uh, named Brandon Andrews. He was an active uh, right SEAL on. team guy, and uh, mm -hmm. and I got to travel there. He was a consultant on this film called Game Therapy. Mm -hmm. Funny enough. Uh, it was an Italian uh, American co-production, and it and it did fairly well from what I hear. Um, but Brandon and I had some great stories to uh, to to kind of cross over with as far as martial arts and and, and his tactical stuff. So oh, that, really? That was the first time I ever got to like hold these insane weapons. Like I was yeah. shooting Uzis, and yeah. <laughs> the Moroccan military brought all these weapons. We had to count every round and pick up every oh round every that we piece fired. of brass. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was a wild time. But going back to the John Wick thing in Morocco, um, she had the greatest time over there and learned a lot. And of course, when it comes to fight choreography and fight design, what you practice in the gym, oftentimes and, and more times than often, it, it changes on the day of the set because you know there there's stuff Physical in the way. Considerations, there's, space oh, yeah, considerations, yeah, absolutely. Time it's like, considerations. Hey, you're, you're training this on a on a football field, and all of mm -hmm. a sudden you got to do it in a bathroom stall, like a John yeah. Wick, you know type of sequence yeah a close quarter battle like exactly in a tight pinch so yeah. things Nuts. change on the dime on the fly all the time and you have to be able to improvise and you got that's the importance of, of training in an actor is and especially when it comes to several different wheelhouses that you have to take on very much like the punisher you have to have every weapon you, you got to be well-rounded and so with with hallie's training she went through not only the the, the, the gun foo as we call it but the actual tactical stuff and she had to learn judo jiu-jitsu wow Thai, uh, Nuts. boxing she had nice. to learn how to perform and train like an actual stunt performer so not only that but her reactions the timing the distance um, so there's a lot of stuff going into it and, wow. uh, and, and, and we did our very best and, and I think she did she did wonders. Phenomenal, the a phenomenal <laughs> job, <laughs> man. Well, Peter, tell us a little more about, um, can, is there anything you can tell us about what you're doing right now? Like anything coming up, anything you've done that my people might be able to check out? Or? Sure. Um, a, a fellow um, military guy, which you guys need to connect with, his name is Dominic. Um, oh, cool. Dominic McGee is a good friend of mine. He's from England, um, oh, but wow. was uh, has been here for about 15 years, if I remember him saying. He was in the military and... Uh, you know, beautiful story. Came here with a couple hundred bucks in his pocket, and classic now, American dream yeah, story, yeah. huh? Oh, man. Now, uh, Dominic and I are collaborating um, with one of my other clients, Katie Cassidy of the show Arrow. All right, uh, oh, that's nice. super cool. Her, her uh, father was the famous David Cassidy, oh. and uh, from the Partridge Family, and no. and the musician, and all that. Looks like I mean, splitting image of him. Um, she's a good friend of mine, and I, I somehow. Um, told Katie, hey, you, you need to meet my friend Dominic. He has a book, and he's already written three of them. And it is this incredible, incredible character that I think you'd be perfect for. Not only do you look like this person, but you have the capability and the action and the training that this will require. And uh, the, the, the name of the book, which you can pick up at any bookstore, is called Beauty is the Beast. And the front cover is a woman with a, a Nepalese kukuri knife. Uh, on her in her back, which looks kind of like a, a massive machete that's kind of bowed out, angled. It's like a coconut. Yeah, knife, it right? looks like yeah. a boomerang with a yeah. handle. Wow. 
and this thing is made to decapitate people. It is like <laughs> the Vlad the Impaler type of a weapon. Yeah, that was used Scare by what it was 10. like the Roman army or the yeah. Greeks used yep. that as their primary yes. uh, like short sword. The yeah, Gurkhas use it. Yeah, that's where it's all from. I do. Did I, you know, I, I paid attention yeah. in class. Man. <laughs> I paid attention in class. In, in the Gurkha Yeezys, but um, you know, it, it's it's such a just strange exotic weapon. And uh, anyway. Katie and I and Dominic were all collaborating on a project that's now, we just finished filming the first couple pages of the pilot. Uh, so that's that's what's on the back burner oh, right now. And anonymous content yes. is huge. They're looking at it and they really like it. Right. Uh, we had uh, we had people at Apple TV look at, look at it and they love it. Uh, we kind of need somebody like a, like a Quentin Tarantino to take uh, it by the horns because okay. it's a little dark. Okay. Um, but it is, if I had to explain it in a nutshell or sound bite, it's kind of like a John Wick character meets a 007 character, but wow. a female version. Oh, and okay, so right on. That's bad, that's bro. That, yeah. So that's, oh, yeah. I'll get you guys the book, and I'll have Dominic autograph it. But it's oh, great. yeah. It's like great. A hang it up. Like Atomic Brunette. Yeah, you know? pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> I thought that up by myself. So. Yeah. Good one, man. You're <laughs> so on it. Yeah, we're currently that. working on that and, uh, and just getting that down the pipeline. Um, she just finished a film with Mel Gibson, so now we're, uh, oh, no we're, we're back onto the the scope of dialing this in and um, and just getting it going. In about a couple of weeks, I'm going to be working with, uh, if all goes well, with James Bamford, who is um, the director of the new Superman. Oh, right on. Uh, and, and also um, through uh, the Arrow universe. Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> he, he's the director and the man behind all that. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's uh, apparently have a fight scene with Mickey Rourke. Oh, and uh, it's going to be cool. No so we got a couple of fun little projects lined That's up, cool. you know, just staying busy. That's just cool. Doing the best they can. Very busy. Yeah. And folks, you, yeah. And anybody, if you want to, Peter Tom, Peter Lee Thomas is on Instagram, you know, and stuff Thank like you. that. Yeah. Yeah. Where uh, the did you find this guy? Dude? <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah I, I, this I, isn't, I, I thought we were going to pick up a guest on Craigslist. So like we found, but you brought a uh, super, offer up, offer yeah, up. offer up. You found a superstar, dude. He's we are not worthy. That, Peter Thomas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, we are I'm, not worthy to have you on this <laughs> podcast. I know, man. Watch, this is going to be, this is going to be the one that puts us in the <laughs> It's going to put us on the map, man. Yeah, <laughs> on the map here. We're going to be number one in Finland oh, now. Yeah. Man. You know? Yeah. Ryan Travis, the you know the guy Ryan from Travis. the gym yeah. back in the day. I just director, director, writer, director. He works for NFL and he's shooting a lot of stuff now. And, and Izzy and I just did a, you know, a couple. What was that? A year or two ago? Yeah, the uh, the uh, kind of spec ops kind of one. Yeah. yeah. So that is probably going to turn into something. I had to like tighten the crap you out of like this. Touch it, tighten it, like while we're recording, because that's something I can edit out of the podcast itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's fun for you know people watching. Is the Jedi mind yeah. trick? Uh, That's right. why so, you're bending it to your will. Yeah. <laughs> when you find gentlemen, give me a nice clap. Go for it. Nice clap. That was a great clap. That was better than nice. Okay. <laughs> That's right. B minus. B minus. Uh, so jump kind of back in uh, where you're at, or we can just transition to the question. Okay. Just give it like a segue, like, hey, we want to. So we're just gonna fire some questions at you, blah blah blah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Where were we? Uh, it 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 doesn't matter. I I think we're in a good place to transition anyway. Okay. So, all right, Peter. So we got we had, we had some more specific questions uh, that we had prepared for you. We want to see how you how you react. Uh, I oh. want I want to know um, martial arts training, you know, fight choreography. I know you've done the real thing and also you, you you've used it in movies. But have you ever had to have you ever actually gotten into like used your martial arts in like a real fight? Yeah, fortunately, yes. <laughs> yeah, the bars of a place, man. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, you know, living in Huntington Beach, uh, Orange County, there's a lot of bros that just uh, want to yeah. always pick on the guy that, that doesn't look like... The uh, guy with really yeah. moisturized hair. They don't think he knows what he's doing. You know, it's it's usually that. And my other friends have like scars on their face and cauliflower ears. So it's always like, oh, I don't mess with that. Let's, let's just screw with this dude. The pretty and boy. It's, yeah. it's always that way. Um, yeah. And for, in fact, my wife... Uh, we have a funny uh, story attached to this, and um, I'm going to try to sum this up as quickly as possible. But we were, they were, my wife and her friends at the time, you know, when we were just dating, she was at this place. Uh, I won't mention names, but <clears throat> it was a, a wonderful restaurant that had the great sangria, and they're all having drinks. I show up, and um, while this is happening, there's a guy that's purchasing, you know, champagne bottles for them at their table and, and they're like wondering where the hell is this stuff coming from so the guy that's you know uh kind of has that thomas crown uh vibe he's across the table and and he goes over there and tries to schmooze them and so i show up and he gets pissed off that i'm sitting with them 
and little did he, does he know that I'm friends with the owner of the restaurant and my friend uh, who's now passed Beto Ibarra he's a professional boxer he's in he's in the inside you know having a, a, a drink to himself so this guy gets mad he gets up he goes hey man fucking drinks not for you it's for the ladies and my girlfriend who's my wife now looks at him and goes uh no he could have a drink we never asked for you to have this so things started to get a little strange and he mm -hmm. kept drinking and drinking and he got more of his liquid courage in him then he came up and he just whispered in my ear man i can basically screw your girlfriend anytime i want oh and I, at that moment i just saw like red curtain yeah of course oh, game over bucko and i just, oh, and I just put my drink down i'm like all right and then he goes i'm gonna kill you man if you don't leave right now and then it just that was it i'm like number one you just insulted my girlfriend and me and her friends you're using foul language and then on top of that you're telling me you're gonna kill me yeah I'm like, all right escalation man. of force boom that's physical. it yeah it was just i'm like all right man i'll meet you in the parking lot which was like from here to maybe you know 15 <laughs> feet away so I just go over there, and he just starts charging at me, and I just threw a nasty right cross right at his chin. Um, he actually spun in a 360 degree, <laughs> and he landed in the bushes, which the sprinklers were going off. Oh, strangely. perfect. Um, Add some insult to yeah, injury, man. It, it was crazy. It was like – it was. I mean, I just wish I had Stan Bush playing. Yeah, his, in the background. That would have been, um, but it, been so it was, good. It was just like, a, it, yeah, it was crazy. It was a Chuck Norris moment, man. And, oh, then, man. and then it got worse because his, you know, his buddies stood up, and these guys were look like rugby players, and yeah. massive dudes. Oh man, there was like four of them that came around me. So then I had to realize, okay, I, I need to start thinking, like surveying the scene and thinking. You know, I've been in this situation, like in all the sparring that I've done and stuff, mm -hmm. and especially the Filipino martial arts. We, we'll do like three on one scenarios or five on one. Just to simulate real street fighting, yeah, you know, and to put to pressure test yourself. Absolutely, yeah. So I kind of clicked back into that mode, um, and I noticed that I, I was just kind of backing away into these bushes because I wanted to invite them into this small space in which the I could kill control. zone. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I did. I actually had. I, I usually carry a knife just because I'm like always opening boxes, or in the stunt world, you're always cutting rope and just doing odds and ends and. Uh, Anyway, so I thought to myself, if they start to do anything crazy, I'm going to, if they have like a gun or something, yeah. I don't know, right? If, or yeah, they're going right. to swing something at me or yeah. bat, yeah. I better, Bottle or yeah, something. I better use an equalizer. So, yeah. and it's just unfair. There's four big dudes trying to kick my ass, mm -hmm. you know? Meanwhile, the guy's still like just trying to put sentences together off the pavement. <laughs> um, but this one big dude swings, he has his hand behind his back. And he opens it up and he swings a champagne bottle at my head that was empty. And I just lean back, um, much like if you were to evade a kick, you know, in, in Thai boxing, you got a kick that comes, you just lean back. Yeah. And you want to do it just subtle enough to where you can then make them pay for missing. Yeah. So he did that. And I just see his big, nice quad. It was like the bigger the target, the better. <laughs> and I just leg kicked him with my shin right above the knee. Um, which is the worst place to get kicked, Ooh, just right on the sciatic baby. nerve. And he buckled. Yeah, probably and, dropped him, huh? Yeah, and that was that. And, you know, it's just like you wanted to just hit one guy and then move on because I knew the other yeah. other, They're uh, coming. The other henchmen were on yeah. their way. Yeah. <laughs> so it was just that. And I thought, okay, this guy, I'm going to just punt him right in the nuts and then just give him a left hook. So I did that. And then the next guy, I don't even remember. I think I just threw him across. Uh, they, they all had just enough to drink, which was perfect because mm. – I was kind of sober, so I, I was able to kind of, um, you know, squelch this this hostile environment fairly quickly. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> but dude. but it was it really was the Matrix moment. Everything is in slow motion. You see, you you hear your own heartbeat. You you don't really. It's just kind of like being in a wave. You're pitted, and you you don't see or hear anything other than your own breathing and your heartbeat. Mm -hmm. You're focused totally, yeah. and adrenaline, and and that's the moment where you try to. B and R, you breathe and relax. You control and suppress mm -hmm. that adrenaline ball. Yeah, because you got your fight or flight absolutely. kicking in. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And obviously, you got to fight. And so at that very moment when this all happened, I can hear my girlfriend, you know, just saying like, "All right, just go, just go," because she heard sirens, mm -hmm. police sirens. Cause somebody had called the cops. Yeah. Um, and thankfully, my friend was the the manager of the restaurant. So when when I heard the sirens of the police come, I just ran and jumped down. It was a, it was like um, that scene out of Terminator Two where he goes down in that ditch, like the the, the water those the drainage massive ditch. drainage ditch. Yeah. So I hung on, you know, the, the 
the, the smalls of my fingers and just let go. And it felt like an eternity of dropping. I actually injured my, my into ankle. Into the darkness? Yeah. Into the darkness. That's when you falling into the abyss. Exactly. Falling into the drainage ditch. Totally. And I ran and I ran and I ran. And I just, you know, I, I, I didn't have my cell phone on me because it was with my girlfriend uh, in her purse. So I re remember running up to a, uh, some construction guys and I said hey man I uh, my car broke down can I borrow your phone real quick yeah <laughs> luckily I remembered her phone yeah. number and that oh, was that she came picking men me up and... always memorize your girlfriend's yeah. phone number always Dude, Peter, so that's, my, amazing. My that's buddy, an amazing story my buddy called me the next day you know the, 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 the manager of the restaurant he goes hey man so uh, yeah you, you broke the guy's jaw you dislocated his jaw broke his nose and he has two black eyes the Good. First guy. <laughs> yeah. And then I found out that this guy was a creep and he would always like fondle the waitresses and he would like try to do really crazy stuff. And he was like one of those guys that would flash his money around. So he was a yeah. complete asshole. Yeah. Yeah. So you were just karma it. coming. Just, huh? Yeah. yeah. Man. He, was, he was best friends with a celebrity that I won't mention names because I don't want this to. to <laughs> Watch. You, they're going to be the four guys that got their ass beat. They're, they're going to listen to this and be like, Peter Thomas, <laughs> <laughs> lawyer up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Found oh, him. We man. found him finally. The man with mysteriously good-looking hair. Dude. He, yeah, he, he was close friends with with this uh, this famous guy, and uh, and and so maybe he thought he can get away with things because yeah. of that was his inner workings or his yeah. no, man, circle that. friends. Yeah. So I'm like, no man, you disrespect. Yeah, absolutely. Street people. justice, dude. Exactly. Oh, yeah. That was that was what it was. So that was one of a couple of instances. That's so. awesome, man. So <laughs> that sparks a question in my mind as far as just your martial artist background, because I know a lot of it is you know spiritual as well connected to um the wushu and i don't know a lot about kung fu so i don't sure. mean to offend if i say anything no, 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 anything okay. noobish but <laughs> how like as far as just like taekwondo and I, i'm i'm a big jujitsu fan so mm -hmm. that's very applicable if you get anybody to the ground you know you can control ground and pound but as far as a kung fu background is that really transferable to street fighting because street fighting can get dirty yeah um in, in the words of late great bruce lee um you have to train every part of your body, your fingertips, you know, um, your, your fists, your shins, your toe, everything mm. has to be basically has to turn into a weapon um, because all these things are facets of the same thing, regardless of what martial art you study. They're all good. And, and I don't think there's one that has all the answers. They're all collective, mm -hmm. very much like like cooking a nice meal. You know, you have yeah. to have several ingredients and, and that also transcends into choreography to, to be well rounded that way. You know the uh, the talent could could then pick up all these things. Um, so going back to your question, yeah, it's it's you know it's been a vast journey. I have studied a lot of different arts, and I'm continually you know put in the the, the position of uh, I guess I could say putting on a white belt is mm. never a thing that I'm afraid of because I, I love to learn new things. And even if you have to train something and come back to it years later, like jujitsu, for instance. Mm -hmm. I've been around Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu my whole life. I never really fell into it. it. I did it here and there, and I would just stop. You know, five years would go by, and then I would do it again for mm. a year, really solid, and I would stop. So as of yesterday, um, good time to ask the question. I got my ass kicked. <laughs> uh, I, I went to the best MMA gym in the planet. It's called CSW, which is, stands for Combat Submission Wrestling. Uh, if you're fans of, of Brock Lesnar or uh, Sean Shirk or any of these – epic uh, MMA fighters, they all train at this place. Wow. And Eric Paulson is the sensei there. And, and what you're learning there is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. You're learning catch wrestling, uh, made famous by guys like Carl Gotch. Mm. Um, you're learning Shuto, which is from Japan, um, mm. shoot wrestling or shoot box. Oh. Um, you're also learning um, uh, just a variety of other art forms, even Judo. We did a lot of Judo last night. So, in fact, one of the guys uh, that helped with, with John Wick was there. So it was kind of oh, cool to see that's some awesome, familiar faces. Um, and, uh, and Eric Paulson, a lot of people don't know this, but who's my teacher now, he trained um, Chad Stileski, who who is the director of all the John Wicks. Wow. Um, wow. So that was one of his training partners and students. Um, throughout the, you know, that's throughout the amazing, years. man. Something so, you said was really cool about p always putting on the white belt. I mean, I'm a firm yeah. believer in you know, always be a student because I mean, the second you're the smartest person in the room, you need to get the. <laughs>
crack out of that yes. room because right. you're you yep. just plateaued right oh, yeah so that sits with me really well man right. i agree that's awesome yeah you don't want to ever get too comfortable right. you know uh you always got to be challenging yourself there's the order and chaos kind of oh thing, yeah you know? mm-hmm. like, yeah totally if you have too much order you get complacent too much chaos you go crazy but yep. so you're always if you get too much order you gotta introduce a little chaos yes. you know and then yeah, you gotta go back it, it is it is the jedi way man <laughs> yeah it's, uh, it's, it's uh, the, you awesome. have to have the balance in the force because otherwise um not to sound like confucius but it, it really is you know under the stars man we're all just one family so the same approach is is within the martial arts regardless of all the politics involved and there's so much politics involved in martial arts like oh, wow. the kung fu guys will say oh no you know that that doesn't work that's bullshit you know this this is better but i think if you if you realize that there's a common thread and and you know rather than looking at all the differences of the martial arts you you look at the similarities and i think that's the the beauty in it is that you continually um you, you really don't want to leave any stone unturned mm-hmm. and um i just been blessed to train with with men like dan and asanto who's bruce lee's closest friend and, and the man mm-hmm. who um who perpetuated the art of jeet Kune Do, um and taki kimura was another one who just passed away he was an original student of Bruce Lee and and, um, and runs the Jun Fan Gung Fu Institute in Seattle. Wow. Um, and it doesn't get any more direct than that lineage. Yeah. Man, um, Peter, I feel like you're like you're like the Forrest Gump. Of the Gump <laughs> yeah, Gump man. Gump. You've had this life where you've woven through, your life has woven together with all these different legends of martial arts and wrestling and stunts yeah. and all this kind of stuff. It's pretty awesome, man. And you're still in the thick of it. You're not. It's not like you're done. No. And you're looking back on your career. This is just like, the first part of your career. Man, I feel like I just started. Like the, yeah. the past. It's a new chapter in your yeah, life, pretty much. The past 12 years of being in the business, I, I look back and go, wow, I'm just now starting. Like it, it's taken that long, mm-hmm. but I don't, I'm not resentful of, of the process of it being this long or whatever, because I love, I love that. I love to just, you know, put feet to pavement, man, and just grind every day. And just now, now I, I'm a father to a, a 19 month old baby, and it's Aww. just. If, if there's anything in life that builds a fire under your ass is looking at your daughter's eyes and saying, you got to be better today. Yeah. You, you can do this. You can do anything. Oh, that's cool, um, man. That's awesome, man. Cool. You never know Super who's watching, cool. you know? Exactly. Yeah, there's right. people. I, I got people that send me messages from across the planet, and they're like, man, you know, because of you, I lost 30 pounds, and it just feels good to be able to be in any position whatsoever. Um to help somebody, you know. Yeah, oh, that's cool. See, I was, I wish I was like you. I just get ran, <laughs> I just get ran <laughs> pics sent to me, man. I need, uh, I need. I'm like, don't stop, stop, stop with that. Oh, yeah, dude, I'm sure well, you got yeah. I need some I, more I, inspirational I shit. <laughs> oh, okay. Knock on plastic. No, I, yeah. I haven't. Uh, I haven't got any of those yet. Surprisingly, yeah, I gotta stop letting my girlfriend do my <laughs> eyebrows. That's why it gives them sends the wrong, sends the wrong uh, oh it, the impression. Right. I think maybe because I have like martial artists on yeah. there or something. You just gotta put like. You know, gun yeah. enthusiasts. Yeah, gun enthusiasts. <laughs> Pro right, yeah. Second Amendment. Yeah, All right, yeah guys. exactly. This is all, we could do a three-hour show with you, Peter, but oh, okay. awesome. we got to wrap it up for this one. But I would like to play like a, just a quick little game. All right, we're gonna do something, some kind of movie trivia, uh, a la fight kind of choreography. Oh, man. So it's gonna be called Name That Fight. So we're gonna give you two actors that were in a movie. Their characters are having a fight. You're gonna name the movie that that fight is from. Okay. All right? So we'll do like a we'll do a quick one real quick or, or we'll do the warm up one. So this one is Chris Chris Evans versus Robert Downey Jr. Oh jeez, Chris Evans. And Chris what movie did they Robert fight? Robert Downey Jr. Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr. Um, is it Sherlock Holmes? Nope. Oh, am I nope. off? No. Nope. He was in Sherlock Holmes, wasn't he? Yeah. We'll give, we'll give you two more shots. Uh, uh, I'll give you a hint. It's a superhero movie. Oh okay. Um. Robert the uh, Jr., Chris Evans. The Marvel. Um, yep. Oh my Close. gosh! Only only twenty more guesses. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, <laughs> sorry, I've been punching the head a lot. <laughs> um, true story. No. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh! Is it the Infinity Wars? Is it close? Close. 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 The war is in the title. Um, Five. What character is Captain America? Play? Four. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Three. Three. Two. Come on. One. It's Captain America Civil, Civil War. War. See, Civil I haven't War. seen that. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I, I, I All need right. to go see that. I'm, I'm really behind in a it's, lot it's of good Marvel, 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 Marvel films. I'm sure with this next one, I, I feel I have a good feeling you're going to crack this oh, one in man. the dome. All right. So for this one, we have Sylvester Stallone and Carl Weathers. Oh, Rocky. Man. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. That's a classic. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, this next Does one. Is anything 80s or yeah, 90s? Yeah, no, I got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stan Bush. You'll probably get a good. Stan Bush. You might get this next one. Uh, this one is Rowdy Roddy Piper versus Keith David. Oh, wow. You went way back. Yeah. WWF days. Um, <laughs> Rowdy Roddy Piper. Oh, man. What movie uh, did I don't even know this one. I'm a... Oh, I love This is a classic. I dated myself. I know oh, what hint geez. I'm going to do. Yeah, if you don't get it. What's the first letter of the, the title? T. Oh. Dude, this is going to haunt me forever. <laughs> I'll give you a little hint. In the scene, he's trying to get Keith David to put on a pair of glasses. Oh, my god! Put these on. I know. I, I see it in the top of my <laughs> skull. Oh, man. I'll give you another hint. It's a John Carpenter movie. Oh, jeez. And I love John Carpenter. This is this is a, a moral Obviously sin. Obviously not enough. Yeah. <laughs> Couldn't you ask should, me about the fog or, or <laughs> any of the Halloween We should have prepped franchises. him. You should have texted him and be like, hey, we're going to play a game. Oh, you, you know what's funny Do your research. questions? I'm actually a big horror film uh, fan versus an action fan. But really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. dude. Quite we'll, the, quite we'll bring you back for our Halloween <laughs> we'll, Yeah, we'll, we'll get along just but fine. But I, I do watch a lot of, uh, of both. But, oh, my gosh. I, All right. I, I'm going to. They live. They live. Oh, Jesus. There you go. All right. Now we're gonna, gonna get. It, now was. we're gonna. You should be. We're, I think we're hitting our stride. So go for it, Cam. Yeah. Okay. This one easy one for you, just because you're such a Bruce Lee fan. Bruce Lee versus Chuck Norris. Oh man, uh, that's the uh, the Fist of Fury. Nope. Is it? Is no. It the no. Big Boss. No. No. Oh, which one was that? It wasn't Enter the Dragon. That's no. for sure. With the dragon Ooh, is in the at, title. It's in the title. Um, Return of the No. Um, oh my God. I didn't know that. I haven't seen a lot of Bruce Lee movies. Only the big ones. Oh, jeez. It's been a while since I've watched any Bruce Lee film. Um, God, this is kind of embarrassing. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're just, just telling kidding. me how Bruce Lee was watching you in <laughs> spirit in your in your test. Come on. Don't do him um, dirty like that. Am I going to get a cheat pick? Uh, I'm not to say anything, but uh, look, it's right there. The way, way of the, the dragon. dragon. You Israel, know what's... Is it worth filming? I know. I Damn. just got okay. to sneak the angle. Damn he, he's, it. he's giving me a lifeline. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you know what's interesting Phone about this film is they've changed the name. Um, the, there was there was a the Hong Kong, you know, when the Shaw brothers and, and that whole world and that Golden Harvest picture they they changed the name so many times. I actually have DVDs at home and VHS tapes of the name completely different from what it was. <laughs> it's the same. So yeah, like company to company. Absolutely. That's so funny. So. Uh, yeah, that, that could be a little puzzling. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, now, all right. We'll, we'll give it to you. All right, so we'll this, do it. now Let's, it's time for lightning round. the Keanu Reeves lightning Keanu. round. Keanu. All of these are Keanu Reeves Point fighting break. somebody. <laughs> 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 Point, and you got it. we give you the other actor's Surfing's name. the source, man. You It'll save your name. life, swear to God. <laughs> That's it. Johnny Utah gets his guy. Utah, give me two. Give me, just love give me that. one wave, man. One wave. I just love that Anthony you. Kiedis is in that movie. And, and <laughs> come on, I mean, Flea and all those guys, it's just too good. All right, all right. First movie, Keanu Reeves versus Hugo Weaving. Uh, Matrix, of course. There you go. Okay, good. Bing. Hugo Weaving, man. All right, Next Keanu one. versus Dennis Hopper. Oh, um, yeah. The, I just said it. No. Dennis no. Hopper. Dennis Hopper. Fan of Dennis Hopper, strangely enough. Um, There's a bus in it. Oh, um, you know what's funny about that? Just a quick <laughs> side note. Hold on, is that was Terran Tactical's very first film as a movie? Actually. Really? I bet you nobody knows that. Oh. oh. Um, he was following the bus in his car mm. while I was filming. Which is called now that's quite trivia. impressive. But what's the remember. name of it? <laughs> but the name of it is oh. called Speed. Okay, yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> There we go. He, he was just trying to delay some time. That's well, right. yeah. 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 I was just, just setting. That's setting very interesting. Traps. I need to check out their facility. And if you're listening, invite me to your facility. Yeah. yeah. All right, next one. All right, next one. We have, this is a giveaway, Keanu Reeves versus Patrick Swayze. Oh, point break. Yeah, right, absolutely. That's one of my favorite that movies. So good. Fun I, fact. I refuse to watch the remake because oh, I love the original. Oh, don't do it. Don't. All right. Oh. Yeah, it, it All ruins right. it. All right, next one. Keanu Reeves versus Mark Dacascos. Uh, Mark DeCoscos. You went to the premiere. Oh, John Wick, duh. Which one? Uh, Which number? Two. No. No. You only get two more guesses. No. Oh. No. John Wick 3? Yes. Yeah. Mark DeCoscos is in that. Yeah, he's the assassin that comes up. He's like, I'm a big fan. 
and then ah, they fight at the end. Yes, yes, yes. He's like, I'll see you again. And I was, was like, so enamored by Halle, I forgot about that. Wait, guy. is that the Asian guy? That the big fight yeah, sequence in the bald guy? Yeah. the bald guy? Yeah. Yeah. He's great. Him, He's yeah. great Actually, in that movie. Legend. Hey, that's right. He is in that. <laughs> that fight <laughs> sequence feels like it lasts. 15 20 minutes, you know Dude, and that's just one of two. That's and yeah, then they got the other two guys that he lets go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, John Wick 3 is one entire core fight I, choreography. It's funny because I only watched that in at the premiere, I'd never seen it. Like, I don't even own it on. Oh, DVD you just DVD saw it, you saw the legit one. That was it. I <laughs> that just was rinse, it. and that was it. But I do need to brush up on a lot of okay, a lot of those. All good, man. We're gonna keep the ball rolling. We but, got a couple okay, more. Next All one right. Keanu versus Tilda Swinton. Oh, shit, I don't even know who that is. I don't oh, even know who that is. This I don't is, know. This is my. This is from. Uh, is it is a vampire it? film? It. No. Whoa! Nope. It's pretty close. Pretty close. Um, pretty close. There's monsters ho- in it. There's holy water involved. There's holy water in it. Oh, it's Shia it's, LaBeouf is in it. That Lucifer film uh, with with the devil and all that. Uh, um, yep, pretty much. Pretty oh much. Oh my gosh. I'm um, honestly. I love that movie. I love this movie. What it's does so the good. title start with? A C. Is it cursed? Nope. Mm. It's a name. Not the craft. Uh, it early, is. early Holy Roman Emperor. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Uh, Chris, Chris, I don't. <laughs> John. Oh, gosh. Oh. Constantine. Constantine. Oh, Constantine. Yes. It's fine, man. This is the slowest lightning round ever. It's fine. I would right. I would have gotten about zero of these just because I don't know actors' names. I just know their faces. And you know what? It's it's one of those things yeah. where you know it until you get put on the spot, and then all oh, of yeah. a sudden you don't know. No, this is terrible. All right, go for it. Okay. Free to go. We're almost done. We're almost done, man. You got this. Keanu versus Adrian. I don't even know. Adrian, Adrian Palicki. Hmm. What, what year was this made? Oh, this, this is... Uh, 2015 because oh, really? I watched it in theaters when I was in basic training oh, okay. oh man uh, <laughs> wow it's not the one with the girls knock on the door and somebody knocks what? on someone's door <laughs> he basically oh. is just yeah they he's, kill right. he's set up they, oh. they, kill, well, his they well, kill his dog they kill his dog kill his dog John Wick <laughs> yeah. yeah that was the first she's he's in the hotel the, and she she's not supposed to attack. She attacks him anyway. Oh, that's she her. Taken out. Yeah. Oh, the traitor. Yeah. The traitor. And she's like, oh, the, the hits yeah, too I'm not big. Good all with right. names, man. Oh, You're that's good. all right, man. I am the worst. I wanted to give you. I wanted. To, we got to wrap I it up. Barely, but I wanted to give you the last. I one. I barely know what I ate yesterday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. I'm the same way. I walk in rooms See? and I'm like, what am I doing in here? <laughs> and then. But right. I can remember my first phone number growing up as a kid, but not what I put in my <laughs> password yesterday. All right, the, I, I I just want this to go on record because this was my favorite one. I made this list of all the Keanu, right? Keanu of course Reeves you did. And the last one is Keanu Reeves versus a crippling self doubt at losing the love and, and attention of a thirteen year old French Canadian kid. Wow, <laughs> it's Toy Story four. It's Duke Kaboom. I just wanted to put that. Keanu on. Reeves I, is yeah. In... He plays the toy, the little ride, the little no motorcycle ride way. guy. What? And he's like, I'm sorry, Jean. You never see Toy Story four? I haven't seen. I Toy just Story watched 4. it. I yeah. know Jeff Garland voices um, he, the pony. Yeah, the, uh, Keanu Reeves voices Duke Kaboom, the motorcycle stunt uh, toy. I'm you know sorry, Jean. You know. No, I'm working God. with Jeff Garland right now. He's he's in the middle of um, finishing up Curb Your Enthusiasm, but. Um, yeah, he told me about that. Now you just remembered, or you gave me that that uh, the very vivid. I'm glad conversation. I could give you that gift. Uh, but I didn't know that he was in that. <laughs> Holy crap! Oh, man. Okay, I haven't even seen Toy Story yeah, Four. Well, you God, that, man. All right, so that is all the time we have. Peter, Damn. this is amazing. We could do 20 episodes. Yeah, I wish oh, it was man. longer, but, honestly. You know, I'm sure I, the listeners do, <laughs> yeah, too. Man, gonna Sorry to disappoint, guys, on the trivia. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. You're probably <laughs> slapping your table. Going, yeah, what okay. the hell? Send us an email. Uh, I, I, will, I will be prepared on the next one. <laughs> oh, then right, Like we'll I said, have, horror film, bring it on. We'll have you oh, back. Oh, yeah. Man. We'll, we'll, have, we'll back. definitely have you back. Uh, so let people know where they can get a hold of you, watch you, spy yeah. on you. Uh, I don't have check your garbage. My YouTube channel is under construction. I need a little help on that. Uh, I do have a 1-800 number, kind of like Bill Murray. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a script, just send it there. Uh, no, you can find me on Instagram, Peter Lee Thomas. Uh, I do also have a fitness app, um, similar stuff that I, I use uh, as far as programming with all my clients. So if you oh. want to learn how to train like Halle Berry or John Wick, uh, go on pltapp.com and uh, subscribe. 
Right Fantastic, on. dude. Yeah, and uh, you can uh, hang out with me a little bit more on twitch.tv slash myhappyself. I broadcast Mondays and Wednesdays from 3 to 8 p.m. and Friday mornings from 7 to noon. Uh, and uh, Cameron, where can they get a hold of you? Yeah, you guys can find me on Instagram at Cameron C. Fath, or you can check out my streetwear apparel company, Kick God, at Kick God Apparel. On Instagram, yeah, kick out of yeah. I was like, what? That's my company. I should know this. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, dot org <laughs> dot net. Yeah, or you can go to the website at www.kickgodapparel.com. And if you want more pop culture field cast, uh, pop culture field cast, pop culture field manual podcast, you can email us at p c p c f m podcast at gmail.com. I really messed that up. I'll reiterate uh, that. Know, uh, why don't we just take that again? Okay. Yeah. Right. And if you want more Pop Culture Field Manual podcast, uh, you can email us, uh, send us your comments, your questions, your concerns uh, to PCFM at G- PCFM. Oh, geez. Okay, I'll take it over. Happy Christmas. Also, yeah. I'm the, glad I'm not the only Instagram one. Too, and also remind people when we post. Like, when yeah. We okay. You right. got, yeah, I have full I got confidence right. in you. Full confidence. Folks, we post a new podcast every Wednesday. All right. You can find us on Instagram at PC. FM podcast. Uh, you can give us an email at PCFM podcast at gmail.com. And uh, yeah, and we're, we're going to keep rolling these out uh, for your listening and now viewing pleasure. Absolutely. Don't forget to follow, email us. And we are very appreciative that you guys chose to listen in again. Right on. Yeah. I am Cameron Fath. I'm Israel Wright. Peter Lee Thomas. And we are. Uh, you know, the three amigos. A couple of guys yeah. sitting in my living room. <laughs> and I guess we're done. Yeah. Just we're like done. that.